In this segment, software expert Ron Litchie joins me to discuss the immense power of empathy in the development process. We discuss tangible ways leaders can nurture customer-centric mindsets that allow teams to focus on outcomes rather than just outputs. I hope you take away some new ideas for your product team. So this this is, I think, a, a perfect segue to the other thing that I really wanted to get your thoughts on, which is understanding, you know, customer centricity in, in when applying agile practices. And I think one of the things that you highlighted early on is, is the importance for leaders, not just the teams, but the leaders of the organization to be able to connect the dots and understand both the problem space and the impact for customers. And so can you talk to a little bit about, you know, how that applies in, in an agile you know, a methodology and, and seeing how that actually comes to life for teams from your experience? Yeah. So I, so I want to step back and say, it, you know, that I, I think it applies in software development and, and agile is just a better way to do so software development and, and, and it applied to us before we had any kind of agile frameworks, we needed to, sh to connect the dots between what it is that every individual is working on and the impact on, on the world and the impact on our customers. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll go back to, so I, I, um, managed the, the team that developed the UI of the Macintosh for a few years, um, <laughs> several, several decades ago. Um, and, and, uh, let me get, actually, let me be specific. It was the early nineties. Uh, and it was System 7 and, and OS 8 that we were working on. And I was hiring members of the Finder team, the Macintosh Finder being the, the visible UI of the Macintosh that, that Apple ships. And I was hiring as an engineering manager of the Finder team. I was hiring, I was, I was hiring for Stellar C++ ability, but I was also hiring for customer empathy. And, uh, and I thought at the time, customer empathy was not a phrase that was used. I, I, um, not, not, other people probably came up with it as well, but I came up with that one as, as this is a, this is a requirement to be on my team. You have to have customer empathy. And I thought, you know, I'm probably five years ahead of the rest of the industry here. I'm at Apple, um, you know, I'm. It's the Finder team. It's the UI of the Macintosh. It's you know I'm probably kind of I'm probably ahead of things, but the rest of the industry will catch up. And five years from now, everyone will be hiring for customer empathy, hiring developers, engineers for customer empathy. And I I'm um, really disappointed. Um, what is that? Uh, Thirty years later, that I see so little customer empathy coming out of software development teams. And I, and I think that it behooves those of us who are leaders to hire for customer empathy to, um, uh, you know, one of my mantras for all of those 30 years from then until now has been that, that we own quality and we own, we in engineering. And, and I think managers of product management should say the same thing. And managers of designers should say the same thing. And managers of testers should say the same thing. We own the customer experience and, and, and it's up to us. Jeremy, I'll lie on What an amazing story. Cause I think that you're right. I, as you started to, to share the story, I'm like, well, you know, geez, I, I don't know if I know any organizations actively today hiring engineers with the prerequisite of having customer empathy. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, it's, it's something that, that every role in a software team should, uh, should have, uh, and, and that, that ownership and that responsibility of quality, I think is paramount. One thing that's really, I think, uh, and this might be just my own experience, and I'm curious it, it, how, how you've experienced this. It, um, is that for for leaders of organizations, you know, even for for these, um, you know, whether they're entrepreneurs and they're they're building the next AI startup right now, or you know, they're seasoned uh, executives that are in key leadership roles of an organization, um, customer empathy 
while it's been talked about now at you know at length within the design community and is known i think within certain circles within the product community of what that means there still seems to be uh, a misunderstanding and a disconnect of, of how customer empathy drives the business and how to think about the role of of their teams um in you know solving those needs and impacts and you've certainly you know you had firsthand experience at apple that has certainly been ahead of the curve in in many ways um for decades but wh why do you think that is why do you think that understanding the importance of company uh, you know, customer empathy and building that muscle in the organization has been so challenging to uh, for the you know business community at large to adopt and understand. Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure I can speak for the business community at large, but but from an engineering standpoint, from the engineering community, it's it's when we go to school for engineering, we learn how to do engineering. We we learn algorithms. We 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 learn approaches to um, to doing uh, sorting and you know Donald Knuth's um, uh, uh, tones of um, approaches to doing engineering. We learn pattern engineering patterns, but we too often don't get connected with the fact that we're doing we're creating things for people. We're creating things to make people's lives easier, and one of the, one of the reasons I went to work for Apple was I had been I had been an, an engineer. I had, I had um, done a ton of engineering on a lot of platforms that were pre Macintosh. That were um, uh, you know back in the, back in the day, word processors meant and using a word processor meant memorizing what F one, F two, F three through F twelve did. As opposed to uh, a very, a very um, transparent and um, intuitive interface that the Macintosh provided, and I thought, you know, it's as much harder as it is to do engineering for that interface, and it was a ton harder than um, than than doing the same thing on a on an IBM PC. On, a, on an Apple II, on a um, on a Commodore PC, on an Atari, on any of those platforms, as much harder as it was, uh, it was the right thing. Because from a user standpoint, it was it was intuitive, and uh, and you know you cut and copied and pasted, and did things in a in a way across every application. It wasn't unique to the word processor because you did the same thing on a spreadsheet. You did the same thing in a database. You did the same thing um, on these other applications that you used. And there was the there was this commonality that that Apple had created to uh, uh, to the way we use computers, and that that was just this leap forward. Uh, and it's infuriating. So I'm getting, you, you probably you probably made a phone call and uh, and gotten uh, and gotten some automated interface that uh, refuses to. Um, uh, I called AAA the other day, and uh, it's like, oh, you have a mobile phone. Well, let me give you a URL to to do this thing, and the URL doesn't work, and there's no other way to there's no other way to deal with this. That you're stuck and and uh, catch twenty two. That that uh, that clearly they had no one in QA thinking about. Well, what happens if that happens? Um, and and we need to we need to come at it from a from a user perspective, not from a here's what makes it easiest for us perspective. Yeah, I think one one thing you touched on in the beginning of that that it, I think is it's really worth calling out is that you know this idea of being customer centric of understanding you know that we're building for people is you know it sounds intuitive but it, it's not being taught when we're developing these skill sets and it's um i've certainly seen that you know uh 
I was at a, a dinner a little while back um, at MIT, and it it was amazing to, you know, everybody's focused on the thing that you can create, but, you know, there is still this, you know, clear gap in, to your point of that customer-centric mindset, that understanding of empathy and the outcome that we are building these great, you know, uh, products, you know, for uh, users to, to, to better their lives and, and how it can either enable them to do something greater, unlock future potential. And I, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's a really big gap that, that does need to be filled, um, in the broader space. Uh, certainly, I mean, you're, you're talking about firsthand experience inside of, you know, these teams, but, uh, -huh. I have to echo it. it. I think it's just as pervasive externally where there's, um, you know, a literacy, like a, uh, an empathy level of literacy that needs to be taught and brought forward into those that are coming into the workforce so that they can be set up for success to do their best possible work because they're incredibly bright people that are missing a tool that, that would uh, help them be even more amazing at what they do. Yeah, I want to come back. I want to come back to our cross functional no. teams and yeah. Um, I want to come back to cross functional teams and uh, note that back at Apple, we had we had a UX designer who was on our team. She reported to the UX design team, but uh, but she she came to every meeting that my engineering team had. I think. Maybe not my staff meeting, but every other every other meeting, the architectural presentations that uh, my engineers were giving to each other about the architecture that they were creating, she was in those, and she was and and, and she was and and the cross pollination of engineering and design work that was going on in those meetings was critical. Yeah, it's it just shows uh, that's another great example of just how an integrated team is is so invaluable and serves everyone's best interests. It's um it's just it's absolutely key. It's the key to building great product. Um there's no doubt about it. I, I'm really curious just to as as we get close to wrapping up here, for those that are we've talked to, about a lot of really important things of making sure we understand the why of understanding you know, teams and, and customer centricity for those that are, you know, have are thinking or trying to move towards developing more agile practices. And for those that maybe have, have been trying, but are struggling to, to get the adoption and to get that, uh, you know, uh, that capability really ingrained into their, their team culture and, and delivering great software. What would you recommend to them? What are a couple of things that you would you would want to impart from your experience to those those folks that might be listening? Yeah, well, <laughs> what I, so the the teams that bring me in to do training um, have have a have have a, a lot of commonality. So uh, 12, 14 years ago, when I started doing training of, of teams in Agile, I was fundamentally transforming waterfall teams to agile but these days i'm mostly translate transforming agile teams to agile and the and the teams that i that i find um a third of the team has worked in some other company that said they were agile a third of the team has read a book on agile or maybe two or three but they're all different books and then the third third of the team is trying to learn agile from the first two thirds of the team and there's no common, there's no alignment. And one of the things that, that I love to do in doing training and, and, and hopefully anyone else is, who's doing training looks for that is for the members of the team to talk with each other during the training to identify, here's, here's what this means for us. Here's how, here's what we can do. Here's the definition of done that applies to us. Here's the, uh, here's the way that we're going to work together. Here's what our standup should look like. Here's what our planning meeting should look like. Here's how we should do refinement of stories. Here's how our, our product management and design and testing and 
and development should work together in our team. And that and that those conversations are critical to becoming agile, not just doing some practices, which which uh, uh, I I would contend will improve software development. Doing practices improves it, but there's an underlying foundation of mindset and values and principles that uh, embraced wide will will um, uh, the, the teams just blossom.